Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Standards of Living Bible Study. Online this evening from Hope Everlasting Ministry. Uh, we're grateful to be on with you this evening. We ask that uh, as you're coming in, we ask that you take a moment and uh, share Standards of Living Bible Study. So grateful to have the opportunity to come and share God's word with you uh, on this Wednesday evening. Uh, start here a little bit early, give a few people, some of our members out there watching us this evening want to come on and be a part of Bible study this evening. We're uh, excited about this opportunity uh, to share with you on this evening. We don't own the rights to this music, but we certainly are enjoying it this evening. So as we uh, make preparation for Bible study, uh, we'll listen to a little of this tonight. And as you're coming in, we ask uh, that you take some time to like it, to love it, share it. Uh, there may be some people out there that want to be a part of Bible study with you. And uh, as you're coming in, we'll, we'll try to acknowledge as many people as we can. Sister LaShawn, how are you? Thank you for being on with us this evening for Standards of Living Bible Study. Uh, grateful to have you on. We ask that as you're coming in uh, to go ahead and uh, hit that share button. Hopefully uh, we'll have some people who will take time to be with us this evening for Standards of Living Bible Study. It is 627. Uh, we're going to watch the time closely uh, so we can be diligent and, and honor the time that we have. We don't want to hold you too very long. Londa Jones, how are you? Thank you for being on this evening for Standards of Living Bible Study. Grateful to have you with us. We ask uh, that as you come in, to, if you feel led to, to hit the share button. There may be some folks out there that want to be a part of Bible study with you this evening. Uh, uh, we're doing good. Thank you, Sean, for asking. We're doing really good. Uh, uh, had a great weekend this past weekend with regard to our uh, uh, church anniversary weekend, church uh, worship encounter on Sunday was absolutely incredible. Uh, Spirit of the Lord was clearly present with us and we're grateful uh, for all that the Lord is, is doing in and through Hope Everlasting Ministry. So thank you so much for asking, Sean. I uh, pray you guys are doing well also. Uh, it's 628. Uh, we'll do our best to start right at 630. We have some people look like a couple more people rolling in, a couple of people are in. And uh, as we continue to see you come in, we want to make sure that uh, we take a moment uh, to acknowledge you and thank you for, for tuning in this evening uh, of Standards of Living Bible Study at Hope Everlasting Ministry. Some people uh, may not know how we do it, but on first Wednesdays, uh, we are in person. Uh, we're moving into what's called First Wednesday in the Word Uh and we're doing that for the last quarter of the year. Um, and when we move into 2025, it'll be called First Wednesday Worship. So we'll have full-blown worship encounter on the first Wednesday of every month, then the second Wednesday. Sister Crystalline, how are you? God bless you. Thank you for being in this evening. Uh, please tell Demikas we said hello. So grateful to have you on uh, this evening. And uh, as I was saying, first Wednesdays are, are in person, second Wednesdays are online, third Wednesdays we uh, take a, a week off where people can enjoy their families, embrace your families. Fourth Wednesday is our fourth Wednesday fellowship. Uh, it's where our men and women fellowship get together. Uh, women have their space in, in the church and men go to their separate space and we just have a great time. Sister Katrina, how are you? Uh, thank you for being in with us on this Wednesday evening. And then uh, when we have a fifth Wednesday, we try to dedicate those fifth Wednesdays to something special, some kind of prayer or uh, evening of healing, deliverance, or breakthrough, something to that effect. So, uh, But we're grateful to be here with you on the second Wednesday of the month. Pastor Sylvester Wilson, God bless you, sir. 
Thank you so much for being on. Pastor Wilson, if you would, um, please do me a favor and type in the name uh, of your church. I want to make sure I I put that out there. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm, I'll look for that uh, before we get started. It is uh, we're coming right up on 630. Uh, let's give it, uh, if you guys will be patient with us, we'll take a couple of more minutes. Go ahead and get you something to start writing with. Maybe we can share something that will that will uh, prick your spirit tonight. You may want to write it down. That's right. Uh, New Beginnings Christian Ministries. They're in the Roebuck area. Um, so grateful for you being on with us, uh, Pastor Sylvester Wilson, New Beginnings. Uh, New Beginning Ministries, so Christian Ministries, so so grateful to have you all with us. We got Sister Sabrina Moore Sears on with us. God bless you, Sister Sabrina. Always great to have the Sears family in with us. Um, she and Brother Colin, uh, friends of the hymn, so we're grateful to have you guys in with us this evening. Uh, we got about one more minute, and we're going to get started. It is 631. Uh, we want to be faithful with the time that we've been given, so while we're in the process of getting started, uh, I ask you to uh, go ahead and get your Bibles in your hands. Uh, we're going to be working through Job, the second chapter, Job, the second chapter, and we're going to work, uh, we're going to try to work through verses one through 10, but we'll be spending a lot of time uh, hovering around verse number three. Uh, also, let me say this as well. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for joining us this evening for Standards of Living Bible Study. It's always a blessing to have you guys on with us. And as we said earlier, uh, if you would take a moment uh, to like it, love it, share it. Uh, we definitely like to see if uh, there's some friends of yours out there that want to be a part of what we're doing this evening at Hope Everlasting Ministry. So let us go forth in prayer. And uh, then we'll move forth in the word of God. Uh, Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. We come thanking you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love, your joy, your peace. And Lord, we thank you for your long suffering. God, we ask you now in Jesus name that you allow us to go forth tonight and share your word with your people. And God, we ask you to allow this word to go forth with both power and with authority uh, so that those who hear it can respond in faith to the word that they hear because we still believe that your word is true that teaches us according to Romans 10 verse number 17 that so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we ask you tonight, God, that as we go forth with your word, your people will respond in faith and as they respond in faith, their faith will grow in you. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray and we give you thanks, amen. Uh, uh, on Wednesdays uh, at Hope Everlasting Ministry, this year-long study uh, that we're in is entitled The Discipline of the Believer. The Discipline of the Believer. We've looked through different aspects of a believer's life and being disciplined. We talked about, uh, we talked about uh, discipline in our thinking, having discipline in our bodies, um, We've talked about so many different areas of being disciplined. Uh, we're going to even take some time and talk about having discipline in our relationship with God. Last week, we spent time talking about having discipline with regard to avoiding distractions. And we spent time uh, last week talking about making sure that we're disciplined and avoiding distractions. We spent time in the book of Joshua chapter number one, uh, where Joshua gave those sound, I mean, the Lord gave Joshua sound instructions about not looking from the right hand or to the left, uh, that he may have success wherever he goes. God says to meditate in his word day and night so that Joshua can ensure himself of having success wherever he goes. This avoiding distractions, we've got to be mindful that uh, we can't we can't get outside of what God's word says. Uh, he said to meditate in it. That mean that word meditate means to roll over in it, to to spend time with it, to to saturate ourselves in God's word so that we can adhere to his word more than we adhere to what's happening around us and things that are happening around us. We even reference Peter 
and how God gave him strict instructions to come to him. When Peter, when Peter saw that it was Jesus walking on the water, he said, if it be you, bid me to come to you. And, and as he's coming to Jesus, he, he took his eyes off the one that controls the storm and started looking at the storm. He got distracted. And so as believers, we have to be mindful to have discipline uh, as Christians here in the earth. We need to have discipline. Tonight, we're going to spend a few minutes. Don't want to trouble your patience too long. We're going to be in, in Job chapter 2, uh, working through verses 1 through 10. Uh, we're talking tonight about having being disciplined in our integrity discipline in our integrity. You know, we look at the life of Job and in Job's life was seemed to be a, a just a, a life of of trials. He 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 goes through this first trial where his children and all of his cattle, everything is taken away from him in one fell swoop. And sometimes uh when we get to a place like this, we we're literally at the place where we're saying, God, literally, I can't take any more of this. But what I noticed in Job chapter two, uh, it says in Job chapter two, verse number one, it says, again, that was a day when the sons of God came uh, to, to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. And so we have to understand it takes discipline as a believer because the things that we go through and the things it seems like that are going to take us out, sometimes these very things or something similar to that, it will happen again. And we have to maintain our discipline and we have to maintain our integrity in Christ. One of the greatest challenges to the integrity of a believer is a trial. Trials are the greatest challenges to our integrity. As a matter of fact, I believe that when we go through trials, the trials in our lives, they come to really test or challenge our integrity in our relationship with God. You know, being a believer, it's easy to live this life when life is easy. It's easy to live this life when life is easy. But what happens when we go through a trial in our lives? Can we, can we trust God in the middle of the trial? As a matter of fact, the question comes down to, Brother Carter, here's the question that it comes down to. Can God trust us in a trial? Because what we have to understand is just like something happened in our lives before, something else is going to happen again. We saw where Satan came in chapter one. He lost his children, lost everything he seemingly had. Job was a man of great wealth, great wisdom, and it seems that he lost everything. As a matter of fact, scripture teaches us in Job chapter one that Job offered sacrifices for his children just in case they didn't offer sacrifices for themselves. This is a man that's a picture of integrity. You know, sometimes when people begin to go through things, and we'll see this in the lives of Job's friends, when men go through things, when believers, when we go through things, people would begin to wonder, there must have been something that this person did in order to go through what they're going through. It's not always that you've done something, but it's sometimes because you've done something. It's not always that you've done something that you go through a trial, but there are times you go through trials because you've done something. What did I do to have to go through the trial that I'm going through? What I went, what I what I've done is number one, I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Number two, I have put my faith, my hope, and my trust in Him, and I will not allow anything to cause me to waver in my integrity. Here's what the definition of integrity is according to Webster's Dictionary. It is a, it is a firm adherence to a code, of espe a code especially of our morals. It is an unimpaired uh, condition. It is soundness. Here's the definition that I love. It is, it is the quality or state of being complete 
or undivided. That means that no matter what I go through, I will not allow what I go through to divide or separate me from my relationship with God. You know, and it challenges come in your life to separate you from your relationship with God. It comes to sever your ties with God. It, it comes to challenge whether you really love him the way you say you do. So again, verse number one, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, where have you, where have you come from? This is a rhetorical question because Satan never goes anywhere without God knowing where he is and without God giving him permission to be there. Satan never goes anywhere without God knowing where he is and without giving him permission to be there. If Satan comes into your life to challenge you or it seems like he's overtaking you, uh, he has permission to be there. But the permission that he's been given, uh, he's been given it by God and it does not catch God off guard when you find yourself dealing with various trials. As a matter of fact, James teaches us to count it all joy when we find ourselves in various trials, knowing that these trials are simply the testing of our faith. So you've got to understand when you find yourself in a challenge, your integrity is being challenged. You've got to stay complete and undivided in who God is in your life because what you're, the challenge that you're facing, the trial that you're facing, it is simply a test and you've got to count it all joy when you find yourself in various tests. Why? Because it is, it is simply a test of your faith. And let me give you some great news tonight. Let me, let me give you some absolute uh, great news. And the great news is that the test that you are taking is a test that you will pass. And the only way we don't fight past the test that we've been given is if we don't use the answer key to the test. The answer key to the test, it is the word of God. And the only way we don't pass the test is if we don't apply his word to the test. You know, all of us have failed a test or two in our lives. This test called life, all of us have failed it. Because at that particular time in our lives, we didn't readily apply the word of God to our lives, but we, we tried to apply every kind of uh, uh, advice and everything else that comes from everybody else, rather than saying, okay, God, since I'm in this, what are you saying to me in this? He says, Satan came and he asked him, where have you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. And he still holds his integrity, although you incited me against him to ruin him without a cause. Let's take a look at this verse number three. He says, he says, uh, he's a blameless man and he is an upright man. He fears God and turns away from evil. So you can have all of these attributes and still go through a challenge or a test that will literally test your integrity. All these things, you know, Sometimes people will say, well, I'm living right, I'm giving, I go to church, I don't beat my wife, I treat my wife right, I treat my children right, I don't cheat, I don't do all these things, but yet it still feels like, I'm, it seems like I'm going through something. Listen, uh, doing all the right things doesn't exempt you from a trial. No believer, let me tell you this, no believer, I don't care how saved you are, how long you've been saved. There is no believer that is exempt from a trial. Notice what this, notice what it says about Job. It says he is blameless, he's upright, he fears God, and he turns away from evil. 
it sounds like if there would be anybody exempted from a test because they apparently passed the test already, it would be a guy like Job. But 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 Job, watch this, he said, but he still holds fast his integrity. In other words, his integrity is such that no matter what the trial is that's happening in his life, Job has already passed one test. He He's already in a test when Satan comes back asking for, uh, asking for the opportunity to challenge him. He said he's so fast to, to his integrity. Now, just because you go through something don't mean you did something. Because there are a lot of times in your life you will literally stop and take inventory and say, God, what could I have done to be going through what I'm going through with right now? And the answer to that question is nothing. You have not done anything. What you have done is made a bold declaration to say, I'm going to hold on to God until my change comes. I'm going to hold on to my integrity. And so the key thing to always understand when it comes down to being disciplined in your integrity you cannot look back at what's been before. You've got to continue to press forward in where God is calling you to be. As a matter of fact, the scripture teaches us that no man that hold, take holds of the gospel plow and looks back, he said, that man is not fit for the kingdom. So you've got to literally hold on to that plow no matter how fast it seems to take you. Sometimes that same plow can take you on a winding path but you still have to hold on. He said, he said, he still holds fast his integrity. Now, again, look at Job. Job is, he said, first of all, he said, there's no one like him. See, you've got to understand that when you accept Jesus and when you live right, you become a target. And when you become a target, the target that is on you is not about you, but it is to bring forth the glory of God that will come out of your life. Let's take a look at something for a moment. Let's go to 1 Peter. Keep your thumb on um, stay at Job chapter 2, but I want to take show you something real quick. Because sometimes the moment we go through a trial... We, we, I mean, it's, it's sometimes I think we, we'll lose our minds. But I want you to take a look at first, first Peter chapter 4, starting at verse number 12. Listen at what the text says. First Peter chapter 4, verse number 12. It says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of his glory, you may rejoice with exaltation. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Here's what we think sometimes, and I'm going to keep on right here. The moment we go through something, we begin to wonder, God, what have I done or what is it about me? When you go through things, he said, when you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. See, we have equated blessings with the check in the mailbox. We have equated blessings with the promotion on the job. We have equated blessings to the house that we get. We have equated blessings to the car that we get. We have, you understand what I'm saying? So we don't understand that suffering for the name of Christ is a blessing. Some people already, you just, you, you just already said, I don't even want that blessing because I really don't want to go through anything. But it says right here, if you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Why? Because the spirit of the glory of God it is resting on you. It's a, it, the, 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 spirit of, the spirit of glory 
and of God, it rests on you. So when, when the glory of God is resting on you, you become a target. You become a target for a trial. You become a target for a test. So don't think, don't, don't become surprised when you, when your, in your integrity begins to be tested. We have to remain disciplined in our integrity because there is a testing that comes to you because the glory of God is resting on you. You are blessed when you are tried because you have a relationship with God. So sometimes we go through a trial, we go through, we got to li literally learn how to stop and, 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 and incorporate 1 Thessalonians 5. Let me go there so I can make sure I quote the right one because I'm guilty of, of, you know, that that 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17. They also, it's just short, short words right there, but it's in verse 18. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse number 18, here's what it says. In everything, give thanks for this is God will, God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In everything, give thanks. So even in the midst of a test, even in the midst of a trial, I've got to find a way to stop and say, Lord, I thank you. God, God, I, God I thank you. Listen, that, that's not, listen, that, that, that's not easy. That comes through a level of maturity that comes through a level of integrity that comes through having a relationship with God that says that God, if a, not watch this, not if I am then in this, because I am in this, since I am in this, God, I'll thank you while I'm in it. And God is, since I can thank you while I'm in it, watch this. I'm now operating in the will of God for my life. It says, in everything, give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God in the life of the believer. Go back to Job chapter 2. Re remember, we're talking tonight about the discipline of having the discipline of integrity. The discipline of the believer being disciplined in your integrity. Integrity. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Integrity. It's not based on the condition. It's based on conviction. See, a lot of times we will, we will praise God and thank God as long as things are going the way we want them to go. But what happens when they're not going the way you want them to go and you just came out of a trial? Now you're finding yourself in a trial because at verse number one, it says, again, there was a day when the sons of men, came, when the sons of God came and Satan came again and God offered up Job again. Somebody said, I don't want to go through that again. But but you've got to understand if, if, if you're the best that God's got, if, if God allows you to go through a particular trial that you're going through, what you've got to be willing to accept is say, God, I thank you that I'm the best that you got for this particular trial. Obviously, Job was the best that God had to offer because listen at some of the things he said about him. He said in verse three, he said, Job was watching. He said, first of all, he said, There's, there's, there is no one like him. As a matter of fact, he said, I created him exclusively for this. He said, there's no one like him. He said, he's blameless. He's upright. He fears God and he turns from evil and he still holds fast to the integrity. Uh, although you incited me against him to ruin him without a cause. Again, I told you, just because you're going through something don't mean you did something to go through it. Just because you're going through something don't mean you did something. And let me let me let me help let me help some believers tonight. Let me help some believers tonight. Stop allowing people to make you think you did something to go through either what you have gone through or what you're going through. Stop letting people make you think people that don't even know God They'll make you think you've done something wrong when you haven't done anything. It's just the fact that you are the best that God has, hallelujah, for the given trial. He said, he said, he hold fast. Matter of fact, he said, oh my God. He said, Job is disciplined in his integrity. 
Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. However, put forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse you to your face. God know all's all about you, but listen at watch this. We all know that Satan, he's an accuser of the brethren. Now, you know, scripture says he accuses, he goes back and forth before God and he accuses the brethren day and night. Here is an example of Satan putting forth a false accusation about who Job really is. God knows who Job is. He's the one who sees Job. He's the one who knows uh, the, 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 the character of Job. But yet Satan is an accuser of the brethren. He said he'll curse you to your face the moment you take away from him what, what he has or the moment that you allow something to come against him, he, he's going to curse you to your face. So the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your power. Only spare his life. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. Let me let me back up for just a moment. The trial it won't it won't triumph over you. The trial will not be triumphant. Notice what the Lord says. He said to him, "You behold, he is in your power, but don't kill him." So you got to understand. You you know how people are. You know how people put terms out into the atmosphere. Oh Lord, this is killing me. No, no, it's not killing you. No, it, it, it's not killing you. It's not killing you because God has given you everything you need to overcome it. First, first Corinthians 10, 13. Let's take a look at that. First Corinthians 10, 13. Here's what it says. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as, as is common to man. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But I'm going to tell you the, 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 the four words that I love in this verse, the four words that I love, it said, and God is faithful. So you got to understand that in the midst of a trial, in the midst of temptation, in the midst of being challenged in your integrity, God never loses his faithfulness. He says, and God, not watch this. I want you to get this now. What I love about God is he, he is he is always present. He God operates in the present tense. He said, and God is faithful. Yeah, not 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 God. What God is favor. He is a he is a very present help in trouble. The Lord, Psalm forty six, verse number one. The Lord, the Bible says, the Lord is our refuge, and He is our strength. He is a very present help in trouble. So, in the midst of trouble, watch this. God is. He text right here says First Corinthians ten thirteen said, and God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. God, God is not going to bring anything that goes above the ability that he's given you. He, he's Listen, he's not going to bring... If You see, there are some things in your life that came to take you out, but he said, I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Watch this. But God will take that same temptation. He'll take that same thing and use it as a source to deliver you here, here's the blessing. Not only will he use the temptation to deliver you, but he'll allow somebody to see your life and allow them to be delivered. Oh my God, I just wish you would get that. He will allow people to see how you have endured through what you've gone through. And he will not only allow you to be delivered, but somebody will see how God has blessed you. And watch this, and they will be delivered because they saw how you went through it. He says, you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. And there it is. His faithfulness says that he'll provide in the midst of it. He, 
See, see, sometimes what happens is we wonder, is God still providing in the midst of our trial? In the midst of the test, watch this, he, he never ceases to provide. He said, I'm going to provide you a, with that same temptation. I'm going to provide you a way of escape so that you will have the ability to endure it. See, you can't do it. You can't endure it without his provision. And see, that's the piece we keep missing. We are trying to overcome trials on our own, but the text just told us, uh, he, listen, he said, no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man and God is faithful. So you, you got you to change how you see God, even in the midst of what you're going through. You got to learn. You got to learn to say, God, even in the midst of this, I know you're still faithful. I know you, you're you going to help me maintain my integrity. I know you're still with me, even though it feel like you left me. God, I, I, I know you're here, God. I, I know you're giving me everything that I need. Job chapter two, Job chapter two, we're in verse number six. It says, so the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your power, only spare his life. I told you, whatever happens in your life, God allows it to happen, but he causes it to work. Scripture teaches us again, Romans eight, verse number 28. And we know God causes all things to work together for the good of them who love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. God doesn't cause it to happen, but he's going to cause it to work. He'll allow it to happen. And if he allows it to happen, he's going to cause it to work for your good, even though Satan doesn't want it to, even though when it happens, it don't feel good. But our faith will get us to the point to understand that God is going to use even this. So you got to you got to begin to take a look at this thing and say, God, even this is going to work for me. I don't I don't even I don't even know what your this is, but you got to see and say, God, even this, what I'm in right, even this is going to work out for me. God scripture teaches us in Romans chapter eight. I think it's verse number 31. It says, what shall we then say to these things? My God. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? It might come in our lives, but listen, it, it won't stop us because God, watch this, because God is for us and God is faithful. He said, I'm giving you permission to be in his life, but you can't take his life. Good God Almighty. I'm giving you permission but his life belongs to me. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore balls from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. And he took a, a pot shirt to scrape himself while he was sitting among the ashes. Let me show you something. You got to remember now, Job is a man that had everything. Ten children, all the cattle you wanted, all the money you wanted, everything he needed, he had everything. But God reduced him to using fragments of pots, broken pots. He took broken things to literally scrape the balls off of his skin. A man that has so much that could probably afford a, a world-renowned dermatologist because of the boils on his body. He probably could have he could have afforded a world-renowned dermatologist. He is reduced to taking scraps off the ground just to scrape his skin. But watch this, even in the midst of all of that, hallelujah. God is still with him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, even in the midst of all that, even in the midst of looking to the point, because you're if you read further, when his friends saw him, he was unrecognizable. He didn't even look like himself. 
because of everything that he had gone through. Because God found him to the point that this is a man that no matter what he goes through, he's going to hold fast to his integrity. I'm asking you, 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 you got to remain disciplined in your integrity because although God allows it to happen, you got to trust that he's going to cause it to work. And see, the, the, the problem that we deal with, Sister Katrina, is how long do I have to be in it? How long does it have to last? We, we've got to know everything about it before we will allow God to, to, to take us through something. That's why, that's why God doesn't show you everything. I told y'all this before, that man in John chapter 9 who was born blind. His disciples asked him the question, who sinned? Did this man sin or did his, did his parents sin that this man was born blind? Jesus said, of course not. Neither one of them sinned. But, but this man was born this way so that the glory of God could be revealed in him. Could it be? Oh, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Could it be? that what you are going through is for the glory of God? Could it just be that God allows you to, to go through what you're going through that so that he can get the glory out of your life? Could that be the case? I, I venture to say that I venture to say that when you believe who God is, I believe that because the glory of God is resting on your life, God will allow you to go through some things that you're going through because he knows that ultimately he's going to get the glory, hallelujah, out of your life. He said he was reduced to taking the rubbles from, so basically a pot shirt is if you take a flower pot and break it, the pot shirt is the pieces from a broken flower pot. And he just took that, he said, and he took the pot shirt and scraped himself while he was sitting among the ashes, sitting among nothing. A man who had everything is now sitting among nothing. And what happens is when it comes down to you being disciplined in your integrity, I told you, it will be the closest people in your life that will make you wonder, is it worth it? Verse number nine, then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast your integrity? Listen to what she said to, listen to what she said. She said, curse God and die. Now notice now, if you read up further, Satan said, that he would curse God. The person, I, I, and I'm gonna tell you, you know, men, men, men know this, you know, this, this is the most influential person in a man's life is his wife. The closest person to him, the most influential person here on earth in a man's life when he's married is his wife. So notice what, what Satan does. He uses the closest person to him to say what Satan said he was he would do. He said, she said to him, do you still hold fast in your integrity? She said, Job, are you still going to be disciplined in your integrity? She said, curse God and die. Now, now, hold on, wait a minute. Before we, before we crucify her, before we throw her away, before we just said this is a, a wicked woman, let, let, me, let me help you. This is not a wicked woman. This is a wounded woman. She's wounded because this woman had all, everything she needed. She had 10 children. She had all, they had everything they needed. To, she, she had a husband that had a great reputation. She, she had, they had servants. They had everything you wanted. They, 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 had, they lacked nothing. Now, she went from having everything to Satan showing up at their house again. So let's not, let's not throw her away because we got to understand that she has gone through something some people would have lost their mind over. She said, you need to curse God and die. Basically, what she's saying to him is, 
the word curse in the context of this verse no, don't, doesn't mean using foul language toward God. No, she's saying you need to sever your relationship, sever your ties with this God you say you love. You, you Listen, this relationship is not paying off. This, this relationship is not working out the way I thought it was going to work out. This relationship has cost, oh my God, this relationship that you have with God has cost me everything. So would you blame her? She said, how, how long, how long are you going to still sit here? I don't even recognize you. I probably know your voice and I know it's you because I knew how you looked before you got in this condition. How long are you going to trust God? She said, curse him and die. Sever your relationship with him. And what I've got to tell you is, listen, severing your relationship with God won't change your trial. It won't change it. No, as a matter of fact, I believe severing your relationship with God will literally, it will cut you off from the provision that God has for, has for you in the midst of your trial. He said, because first, first Corinthians verse, chapter number 10, verse number 13, he said, he will use the temptation to provide you a way of escape so that you will be able to endure it. Without, with, listen, without, without the provider, there is no provision. So she is literally the closest one to him is coming to challenge his integrity here. He said, how long are you going to hold fast to this integrity? How long are you going to be disciplined? Break this relationship because your relationship has cost me everything. And it's the closest person to him that's, that wants him to question his integrity. But listen to his integrity. Listen to Job in verse number 10 and we're done. It says, but he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Job held fast to his integrity. He remained disciplined in his integrity. He remained uh, in a place, in a posture of worship, even though he was going through the most difficult place in his life, the most difficult time in his life, it said, he did not sin. He said to her, he said, you're talking like an unbeliever. That's what that means. He said, you're talking like a person who hadn't had good things from God. He said, you can't, you can't just live with the good and not be willing to accept the adversity you know, you, you know, you got you got to be willing to take the good and the bad because whether it's good or bad, God is still going to be your source to bring you out of the situation that you're in. It said, but yet in all of this, Job remained disciplined is in his integrity. So as we continue in this study entitled "The Discipline of the Believer," tonight we're we're focusing on remaining disciplined in our integrity. Even in the midst of a trial, even in the midst of sickness, even in the midst of a health crisis, we've still got to maintain our integrity. And that word integrity means the state of mind to be complete or undivided. That means that I'm not going to allow anything Matter of fact, let's 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 delve into that and then I'm done. Okay. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And it's right there. Um it's right there, starting at verse number 37. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So there can't be no separation. You must remain disciplined in your integrity, remaining whole and complete in God, because of the relationship we have with him.
Nothing can come between our relationship with God. Listen, I'm going to stop for a moment and see if there's any, maybe you got a question of how do I do this? You know, uh, you know, how do I get to the point where I have this kind of discipline in my integrity? Uh, one thing I will tell you is this, to have discipline in your integrity with Christ, no matter your struggles, no matter what you're going through, it takes building relationship with him. It takes, it takes trusting him when you can't trace him. When you can literally stop and ask God, where are you in this? But even Sister Sabrina, even when we ask God, where are you in this? We still got to believe by faith that we overwhelmingly conquer in this. Why? Because God, he is faithful and he loves us. Yeah, yeah listen, a, a trial doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. A test doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. Our, our, our church has heard me say this many times, a faith that can't be tested, that's a faith that can't be trusted. And so you got to understand, God wants to know, can he trust you? Because you're still his ambassador here in the earth. The ambassador says what the leader is saying. You can go to another country and be from the United States and you're an ambassador to another country. You say what the United States is saying. You're saying what the leader is saying. When you're not saying what the leader is saying, uh, that could be cause for treason. And so as believers, we have to continue to say what God is saying. Watch this. Even when we can't hear what he's saying. If I can read what he's saying, I've got to say what he's saying. Even if Satan has tried to dull my ears from the word of God. But if I know what God has said, I've got to keep saying what God is saying. I got to keep saying, of, of all I'm saying, uh, but God is faithful, but God is faithful, but God is faithful. That's all I have to say and trust that God is faithful, even in the midst of my struggles, even in the midst of my trials. Any other questions? Any Anybody got anything you want to type there? I'm looking right at it. If I see it come through, thank you, Sister, uh, Sister Tabrina, to God be the glory. God bless you, Minister Tasha, to God be the glory. Uh, Sister Charity, God bless you. To God be the glory. We, we're grateful tonight uh, to be able to come to you with Standards for Living Bible Study Online. Here, here, Here's the thing. There's somebody out there tonight. You've shared this with somebody, and they're just in an absolute struggle wondering, God, where are you in this? God, 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 you can't be in this. Here's what I'll tell you. Let me give you an assurance. He's in it. He is absolutely in it. Matter of fact, he knows that you're in it. When you're his child, he knows that you are in it. But you've got to trust him that he's going to give you a way of escape to maintain your integrity so that you can endure what you're in. But there's somebody out there tonight, you're not saved and you're ready to give your life to the Lord. You're saying, you know what? I want a relationship with God like that. I, I want to get to know God for myself like that. I tell you what it starts. It starts by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Uh, just had a great opportunity today um, to share share salvation with someone today. And, and I, I just believe this. I, I, I believe this with everything in me. Um, I had a person recently, uh, Minister Tarsha, sent me, a long, uh, sent me a long message on Messenger saying, uh, well, you know, Christianity was created here. This is this and this. I said, listen, I, I listen, I, I, I'm not disputing anything you've read, but here's what I will tell you. I've read the word of God and the word of God has worked in my life. He, he saved me. I know God saved me. I know he delivered me. See, I was that boy, um, that, that in June of 2000, I was a young man in June of 2000, and I got out on my knees and prayed and I asked the Lord to remove the taste of alcohol out of my mouth. And from June of 2000 to 2024, I've never had another drink of alcohol, never desired it, never wanted it. Um, and, and, and God delivered me from it. From that night to this day, I know God delivered me. I know he did it. And I know it couldn't have happened no other way but through God. As a matter of fact, my wife told me, she said, man, I have been praying for you for a while that God would just take that taste out of your mouth. And when we connected our prayers together, I didn't know that she, she was praying that, but I prayed it. Then I looked up and th th to this day, I've never had another, another drink of alcohol. But I believe that 
uh, God did that then because he knew what I would be doing today. Even if I wasn't doing that today, he knew that wasn't good for me. But how did it happen? It happened when I made a sincere confession with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Here's what scripture teaches us in Romans chapter 10, starting at verse number nine. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, watch this, you will be saved. That's an absolute assurance. It says for with the heart, a person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth, he confesses resulting in salvation. Here's the exciting part for me. It's exciting to be saved. I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad to be a believer. But verse number 11 gives me so much assurance. Romans chapter 10, verse number 11 gives me so much assurance. It says, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Listen, I've never been disappointed in Christ as long as I've been saved. And there's somebody out there tonight they're going to hear this. You're going to share this with somebody. It's going to go to a lot of places. And they're going to say, how do I get to the point where I trust God like that? It comes by having a relationship with him. So as I pray tonight, I'm going to pray that someone has received Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. And I'm going to ask you to get involved and get connected to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. I'm not talking about an entertainment center. I'm talking about a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church so that your life will be changed forever. Let us pray. Father God, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come thanking you for this day. We thank you for your grace, and Lord, we thank you for your mercy. God, we're praying tonight that somebody has heard your word. It has pricked their heart. And they're ready to make the confession that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And they believe in their heart. And when they believe it in their heart, God, you have caused them to be righteous. But God, I believe tonight that because they accept you and they confess you and, and believe in their heart, God, you will never cause the believer to be disappointed. God, I pray tonight that someone connected to us is going through a trial, they're going through a struggle, they're beginning to wonder, God, where are you in this? And God, I speak to their spirit tonight, God, that you will awaken them, quicken their spirit to let them know that even in the midst of where they are and what they're going through, God, you're, you're in it with them. You're in the midst with them. And God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word that has gone forth. We thank you tonight that lives have been changed hearts have been changed. And God, we thank you that we'll be like in the book of James where it teaches us to count it all joy when we find ourselves in various trials, knowing that the trials are simply a test of our faith. God, we thank you that we'll never separate from you. And that every test that you call, that you allow us to go through, God, you will cause that test to work out for our good. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray this prayer in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God bless you all. I pray that you have an amazingly restful evening in the Lord. And we look forward to being with you again real soon. Join us at Hope Everlasting Ministry. We're located 6520 Happy Hollow Road, Trustville, Alabama, 35173. We are Hope Everlasting Ministry, where the hope of the Lord is and is him. And always remember, it's him time. God bless you all. And I pray that you have an amazing evening in the Lord. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you now.